What's going on guys? So today we are out here at CCRV in Corpus Christi, Texas, and I am going to show you what has to be one of the smallest kind of normal fifth wheels, not one of those super compact kind of oddly designed ones, but a normal fifth wheel that is super small, super compact, and has a lot of really nice features to it. So hang tight, I'll be right back. So check this out guys. This is a Rockwood Ultralight. This thing is super tiny. This is the 2671 WS. It's probably under 30 feet long. I'd have to guess probably closer to about 29 feet long. This thing is super cool and it has a lot of really cool features that you might not normally associate with small fifth wheels like this, such as torsion axles. That's pretty much common on all Rockwood units, but it's pretty cool to see that they have something this small that has torsion axles on it because they are considered an upgrade. Anyways, let's take a look at the numbers on this super small compact fifth wheel. So this unit has a gross vehicle weight rating of 9,835 pounds, and it has a cargo capacity of 1,775 pounds. This is a really light unit for being a fifth wheel. This is what I would consider to be three quarter ton towable if you get the right package on it. I would not put something like this behind a half ton because you have to factor about 20% of that near 10,000 pounds is gonna be pin weight which means you're gonna have roughly 2,000 pounds of weight over the back of your truck, and that's not including the actual hitch itself plus the occupants that are in the vehicle, which will really put this above what almost every half-ton truck is capable of carrying from a payload perspective. All right, so from a slide technology perspective, the small slide up front is a Schwintech slide, and the larger slide is a rack and pinion slide. So you can see it over here. And it's a full depth slide as well. So this thing comes out about three feet off the side. Rides on an eight inch I-beam frame with a boxed section below to support the torsion axles. Again, dual torsion axles on this unit. Runs Castle Rock tires, not a big fan of those, but you can easily replace your tires. They'll probably last you a couple thousand miles without much worry. Let's take a look at the storage compartment here on the side. See much room. I love the fact that they give you the real thick baggage doors. And for a relatively small storage compartment to give you dual slam latches is also really nice. Plus, magnetic hold up top to keep this thing from just swinging down. Has a 50 amp cable in it, so this thing probably has dual air conditioning units. Plus, you can see it has a nice skillet over there as well, which is really cool. You can see it actually has a mounting frame attached to the back of it. You have a water filtration system up here, which is also really nice. Nice aluminum bath deck. You can see here that the wet bay area goes straight down into this lower section right here, which is nice. So you don't have to worry about water getting into this area over here. All your connections are also set up really nice. This does not ride on a drop frame. That's the reason why you see that area sticking up here into the storage compartment, because it's one solid I-beam frame front to back. You have your sewer connection outlets right here as well. And I love the fact that they put a light here on the connection side. A lot of RVs do not have this. They don't put any lighting over here. So you either have to use a light that's in the storage bay or you just don't have any light out here at all and you're relying on a headlight or a flashlight. Coming around, this unit does have electric stabilization even though it is not auto leveling. You have your low point drain down here, plus you have your black tank flush right here, and then you have your 50 amp connection right here. All LED lighting. You have a two inch receiver on the back. It is not designed for towing a vehicle. That is designed just for an accessory rack. Full walk on roof, wired for a Furion wireless backup camera. Coming around, this does have an outside kitchen, and the door on it is very thick, plus it has very powerful strut arms. Those strut arms are really pushing this up, which I guess will prevent it from accidentally slamming on you if it's windy outside. There's no sink back here, which is the only thing I think it's missing. It does have power connections, has a good size refrigerator, and extra storage as well. Underneath, it has a cooktop in place, which is interesting considering they give you another cooktop inside. So you have this two burner gas cooktop and then you have a skillet, which you can also use, which is pretty cool. And right here is the rack for your skillet. So that's really confusing actually why they have two cooktops that are included. This unit has frameless windows, has a huge awning, looks to be about a 18 foot awning, might be a 20 foot awning actually. 
Let's take a look inside of this really cool Rockwood 2621 WS rear living room floor plan. Going up the Moride step above steps. This has a sweet interior. I mean, for being this small, it really has a cool interior to it. I mean, check this out. Has a sofa, which turns into a bed, pointed right at the TV. Has every conceivable area utilized for storage space. Cabinets there, you have a nice refrigerator. Reasonable sized kitchen. I mean, again, this is a relatively small unit, so keep that in mind. Plus, again, they utilize every area for storage, which is really nice. These units are built really well. This actually has some really beautiful crown molding up top, something you typically don't see in this size of unit. Plus you have a four person freestanding dinette in here, which is also cool. So this living room could seat two people here, four here. You could conceivably have six people in a seated position. Plus, you know, kiddos who aren't afraid to be in sleeping bags on the floor. You have your fan controls there. Plus check out this hutch area. This is really nice. This is perfect for a coffee station. Very cool. Working our way up the stairs. This actually has a really tall height to it going up to the bath deck. You see all your controls right here. These are your controls for your slides, for your heaters, for your tank levels, everything plus all your lighting. That's going to be your air conditioning control. Going into the bathroom area which has two entrances, one from the bedroom, one from the hallway. You have your porcelain foot flush toilet. You could be upwards of about 6'3 to 6'4 depending on where you're standing in here because the roof does kind of slope. Nice, nice size cornered shower. It's actually a pretty good size cornered shower to be honest. Nice cabinetry everywhere. Good size little vanity sink area right here. I mean, they utilized every conceivable area of space that they could come up with. I mean, they even extended the counter off this way. Nice size medicine cabinet. Follows the curve of the wall, which is cool. You have some storage here. Actually, very deep storage here. It looks like it's about two feet deep. Coming into the bedroom area, this is going to be all your wardrobe storage on the side here. And it's a good size wardrobe storage. Looks to be about two feet deep again. You can see inside here, they definitely give you a good amount of wardrobe space. Looking in the bedroom area, queen size bed, and it's a full length queen size bed too, so it's not one of those shortened ones. You have a reasonable amount of headspace here. I don't think most people would hit their head there, but check out the end table they put here. That thing is huge. Definitely enough room to store whatever you need to store while you're sleeping. Plus you have another nightstand over there and power outlets for both and a soft headboard. You can hang your TV up right over here as well. Now, I thought this unit was going to have twin air conditioning units because it is a 50 amp connection, which means that there is no AC here, but it is wired for an AC, so you could easily add one up front. You save the cost of not getting it if you don't need it, and you can always add it later if you want to. Now, I believe I saw a price tag up front here, so let's take a quick look at it. So, this unit has a MSRP of $51,608. Not sure what the asking price on this unit is, but I can imagine it is significantly lower than that. So if this is something you're interested, you might want to give them a call. CCRV in Corpus Christi, Texas. Anyways, guys, I sure appreciate you hanging out with me today. We'll talk to you again very soon.